you claim to be a fan of physics and games. Yeah, me too. So why has no one covered what could be some of the best the world has ever seen? I'm talking about DMM, Digital Molecular Matter. It might not feature destruction on the scale of Red Faction Gorilla's massive buildings, it might not be ray traced or AI driven or any of the other current buzzwords that we all love so much today, but it promised physics unlike any other within the world of gaming. What you're seeing here is some footage from the various early, low res and now rather rare tech demo videos that showcased it. I've watched these countless times, they're seared into my brain. Oh, what I'd give to be able to play a game with stuff like this. Part of the reason Digital Molecular Matter is rather uncovered is because it only featured in one and a half games, and these were console games first and foremost, with rather shoddy PC ports coming later. I'm referring to Star Wars Force Unleashed 1 and 2. It was also promised for an upcoming Indiana Jones game that was then cancelled. And then it was gone, ceased to exist, although DMM did then make its way to various movies and stuff, but who cares about that? That stuff's pre-calculated and pre-recorded. What made DMM so promising in games was the fact that you could control its destruction. Like I said, given the very advanced nature of this physics, it's crazy that barely anybody online is talking about the destruction in these games. It seems like everyone who played them just treated these games like games, reminiscing fondly about how much they enjoyed playing through them and stuff. The fools. They failed to notice the intricate glass warping physics, the flexing metal beams or the tearing plant claw materials. Were they stupid? If given the choice between playing either of these games, which would you choose to play? I, like many others, went for the second many years ago, and have since attempted to play it several times, and every time I've been put off by how dog shit it is. It features like one DMM example per level, and that example is so limited in scope and scale that it might as well not exist. I was almost embarrassed to be playing such a shoddy game for this technology. Exploring the physics in this game left me about as flaccid as this cable right here, and that's coming from a video game physics fetishist. So I can't say the prospect of booting up the first game in this series got me that excited. How wrong I was. Allow me to show you the first level. Holy mother, this is more like it. It might be a Star Wars game, but don't let that put you off because this first level of Force Unleashed looks and plays like a tech demo for digital molecular matter. All the plants shaking about from the shock waves, trees breaking and splintering very convincingly, Wookiees standing on bouncy wooden bridges getting yeeted left, right and centre. Oh yeah, these character physics blended seamlessly with the other physics systems in this game. The developers complained so much about how difficult it was to get it all working properly, but it all paid off, and even when the rest of gaming has moved on so far, these systems stand up well even by today's standards. How has this game slipped past me for so many years? It's incredible! and a great taster of what's yet to come. Now the warning signs are here, because the game itself isn't great, it's complete ass. This game might be from 2008, but it's gameplay probably more like 1998. The combat shallow and unbalanced, but let me tell you now, it's all worth it just for these physics. Still cutting edge, I get that weird excited feeling and I don't mind toying with it for hours as everybody else looks at me with that worrying look in their eye like I should be sectioned or whatever but I stick by my guns here. It's worth enduring this janky title from 2008, even in 2025, because the physics are that damn spectacular. The splintering wooden materials are the obvious standout feature that's lacking in other games. But I also really like the flexing metals. Metals are tough material, yeah? We can all agree on that. But to see it pounce and wobble very slightly after receiving a significant force just feels so right. It's what's been missing in every other game in existence, even in Red Faction Guerrilla. We want bouncier metals, please. Come on other games, follow Force Unleashed's lead here. God, that's hard to say. It does feel like half this game's budget went into this first level with Vader just here. So if we move on to the next level, it's just a bland space experience with not much DMM to experience. But what we do still get are lovely doors that you can bend open with the Force and these show up in various forms throughout the game. I'll just show you a few others here. You can get the weird spindly ones with gaps between the bits just here. And later on, you even get ones with glass inside, and as you warp the metal, the glass shatters out. It's gorgeous. The first proper level of this game, set in a TIE Fighter fab factory, contains lots of glass windows everywhere for you to smash. 
Now, a bit like with ray traced water reflections, I struggle to get that excited about smashable glass because it's a feature that a lot of games have attempted over the years. Half Life Alex being a standout example, where you can fracture a window into smaller and smaller interactive shardy chunks. At least in that game, the broken window hangs around in its broken state for long enough for you to get your satisfaction from it. Everything DMM related in Force Unleashed just feels a little bit rushed, with mere seconds between something being broken and it fading out of existence. And I'm going to blame the consoles at the time with their limited amounts of memory for this. I just wish I had some more time to dissect these windows before they disappeared. Clearly, DMM is capable of handling stuff like this. I didn't expect them to let you smash the outer windows of a space station, but here it's like a gameplay feature because it sucks anything nearby out of the airlock before then sealing itself up with a metal barrier again. I just feel like games have got a little bit lazy with this sort of stuff in more recent years. I think that games have got more and more complicated to make, and the developers don't deem these little touches worth the effort to implement anymore. And like I did touch upon earlier, the developers did say how challenging it was to combine DMM with the Havoc and Euphoria physics engines, which handle the physical collisions and character models, respectively. But look, it's clearly worth the effort because it makes The Force Unleashed still relevant 17 years after release, compared with all the other subpar games from the time that just don't have any outstanding features worth experiencing again today. Yes, I always felt like I was against the clock in this game. This room has some lovely glass interactions, but it's also full of toxic gas, so your time spent interacting with it in this room still feels rushed. Ah, This physics tech demo keeps getting interrupted by the game! Stop it! Let me enjoy my physics interactions in peace! Something you do get time to enjoy is the Euphoria physics, which is also the driving force between the fun character animations and the likes of GTA 4 and 5, allowing people to flop about like a ragdoll while still clinging on to things and retaining some degree of life to them. It allows you to blast characters all over the place with longevity you don't get in other games, where once they do ragdoll, they're dead. Here it's still cutting edge, look at how these stormtroopers finally get to profess their love for each other as they hold each other's hands as I fling them through the air. Crabs in a bucket. Help me! Anybody! Help me! Look at this one, grabbing hold of something for dear life as I attempt to yeet him into the air. This guy here, I'm not sure if he's dead or not. But that's just it, Euphoria Physics bridges that gap and makes it look as though this character is having the worst day of his life. This sort of stuff stands the test of time. And in this example here, despite being suspended in the air by my force moves, the enemy is still attempting to line up and fire off a few shots at me, which only causes him to tumble weightlessly in circles. Doesn't every game need this? It's one of the few aspects of Force Unleashed that I don't think will ever feel dated, because it goes so far above and beyond, often quite literally. How much should metal be able to stretch? I ask this because after a few force pushes, this door is clearly never going to properly close again. One of these doors now almost spans the entire breadth of the doorway. I wonder if there is any concern that abusing the force push on these objects could render a certain passageway in this game inoperable or janked beyond belief, but it never really seemed to happen to me here because the force push is really powerful. I would like to go through each level of the game to show the highlights at some point, but again, this seems like another relevant tangent for me to show this metal blockade from later on in the game. This one here is a series of individual metal beams, all of which can be morphed and bent into each other. They all collide with each other quite convincingly, which makes me think there is possibly a way here that you could wrap them up into an impassable knot of some kind. But I couldn't get it to happen when I was playing. So yeah, this is another feature that every game should have. Force Unleashed's metal can sometimes be over-enthusiastically bendy and jelly-like, but it's still so much better than the static, artificial objects seen in every other game. We've gone backwards. Credit also to the cape physics. I don't think you could take Darth Vader seriously if he didn't have good physics on his cape, but I guess this is one aspect of the game that's overlooked given how it's become commonplace in more recent titles. Yet here they are in a PS3 game looking great. Not that the characters in this game aren't without their problems. Right, time to get on with a level-by-level -level analysis. Months of attacking Imperial targets and Vader sends a boy to fight me? So we've done the TIE Fighting Factory, and at the end of every level you have to do some kind of boss fight with a bunch of horrible quick time events which really aren't designed with keyboards in mind. On to the junkyard level, which was always going to be the ugliest level, but Jesus Christ does it look bad here. It's almost like there's no lighting at all. Give this a ray traced makeover and I reckon it could look lush. 
And it is fun to curb stomp all these little vivi creatures that are worth the place. But enough of that, for we're here for the physics. And this level is full of stuff like that. You get a few mounds of metal debris which feels quite chunky and satisfying, but all that is just driven by basic rigid body havoc physics, rather than the clever material physics that I'm looking for. These torn metal doors feel more satisfying than most in the game to bend open. It reminds me of how I get into my tins of baked beans, and this cracked metal surface is a joy to tear apart. Now in this entire game, the closest I ever got to getting stuck on a metal door was this one here, which was more stubborn than most were to bend open, and then once I was in it was like I couldn't get out again and had to force push something invisible out of the way to escape. Turns out you can just slash this apart with your lightsaber, which is very satisfying. More of these please. There's this massive glass window here which the first time I played, self-destructed, but in later playthroughs this gave me the chance to tear it apart, which was nice. And this metal lookout was a prime candidate for some bendy DMM metal, but it just swaps it out for a bunch of broken metal parts instead, which is very disappointing. In general, this scrapyard level had so much potential, yet most of it was squandered. There were these metal objects which could be dented and morphed about rather unconvincingly, like they're a large block of soft plastic or something like that. So it's not like DMM always enhances the realism, but there's something quite playful to it. Something satisfying about objects like this that the polish in later games did away with. Having this randomly featured in a level kind of reminds me a bit of that swing in GTA 4. You know the one. They added physics to it for no apparent reason. Was it realistic? No. Fun novelty though? Hell yeah. But before you dismiss DMM as just a fun gimmick, they do try to incorporate it into the gameplay somewhat. There are a few metal things you have to bend in order to create platforms from, and this thing here spews molten metal sparks at you and you can protect yourself from it by morphing the metal into makeshift protective layers. I wish all this was done with proper physics rather than just to hit a certain point where it then deactivates the sparks falling through it. A lot of the physics in this game felt half-baked, but at least they were slightly baked, which I'd still take over other games which don't bother baking them at all. And we're only just getting started. For every level of this game feels like a physics sandbox showcase of some sort, and in my next video I'll be covering even mushier, even fleshier examples of this tech, and where to find them in the levels. Ban this sick filth.